If you're enjoying Picketing Podcast, then why not sign up to our Patreon? You can find it at patreon.com forward slash Picketed, and on there you get loads of extra benefits, such as early access to episodes, you get access to Picketed Extra, which is extra content from our guests, usually about 45 minutes to an hour long of extra content every single week. You get merchandise, you get to ask questions, you get to be part of our Discord community. We have a Discord server where people chat and ask questions and discuss discuss topics that have been brought up on the podcast you get all that through patreon and it starts from just three pounds a month plus you'd be supporting the podcast you'd be helping the podcast to grow helping us to fund bigger and better guests and to pay for all the editing and that kind of thing so please if you are enjoying pigoted then think about signing up and becoming a patreon from just three pounds a month over at patreon.com forward slash pigoted Hello, welcome to Picketed. Joining me today is comedian Ray Bradshaw. Hi, Ray. Hi. And joining me as the expert is former star of The Apprentice, Lewis Ellis. Hello. Just as we get started, what episode of The Apprentice did you go on? So what what series were you on? It was the last one, wasn't it? So it was the one just gone. Oh, they didn't do one last year, did they? So it was 19. So it was 19. So who else? 19, 20. For the people listening to this thinking, because I, I, I'm a fucking massive Apprentice fan. I watch would you every... Ever, would you ever go on it? I'd fucking no, love to go on it. Do your pitch now. Would watch they your, ever watch... have him on yeah. it? Yeah. the question. Right, here's what my pitch is. I've thought about okay. this, so go fuck yourself. Okay, right. let's do it. So here's what my pitch is, right? It is a, um, a hub for schools for resources. So if you think about schools, and as a former teacher, uh, a lot of time is spent creating resources, getting lesson plans, uh, and a lot of time as well, different teachers will make different quality lesson plans. So if you had like an actual hub that you could pay access to for X amount a month, and you could have access to uh, resources and lessons that have been absolutely like verified by Ofsted as being outstanding... For like X amount a month. So like OnlyFans, but for geography. <laughs> 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 like, like your style. I'm sure okay. this exists. I'm going to Google this now. Yeah. <laughs> because, because there's already things like Teachable, where you can teach yourself how to play guitar. There's like, you can teach self marketing and stuff like that. There's got to be a school one, aren't there? Yeah, but the, the thing is, is who can make it? Because if you have like lessons mm. that are like, they have to be, lessons for schools have to be done in a certain way. Right, okay. But, would people pay it? Like, are the teachers paying out their own pocket? No, the schools would. Oh, yeah, because so schools, schools famously have lots of money just now. So they've got good. shit loads of money. They? They, yeah, they just don't spend it. right. Well, some of them are fucked, let's be fair. Um, but they have a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. So here's the thing as well about schools. This wasn't meant to be the beginning of the podcast, but fuck it. Right. <laughs> so here's the thing about schools, right? Do you know the difference between a high school and an academy? No. So the reason that, that, that schools go to academy is because it allows them to spend the money that they are given however they want. Uh-huh. So if you are a high school, they give you a certain amount of money and they go, all right, okay, but you've got to spend that on, um, you've got to spend that on like, uh, you know, your grounds and stuff like that, like you improving your car park, your gates and stuff. And schools are like, we don't want it. Our cafeteria is broken. And they're like, yeah, cool. I'll be honest, this still, is, this still isn't the worst TED talk I've ever seen. So, <laughs> it's actually all right. I'm thinking, was he a teacher or was he just hanging around at school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was, your, what was your business idea then? It was actually that. So he was just, it? Just basically just repeated that. No, mine was a travel company. <laughs> oh, you time. timed it perfectly. <laughs> so, as you I might wish remember, you'd won. No. Within a few months of the travel company uh, being due to launch, we had the pandemic. Yeah. And it's been sat there ever since. But I've, I've started yeah. a new business in the meantime. What okay, was, so what, what, what was that like? Buy a hug yeah. or something like that? <laughs> Please give me a cuddle.com. Yeah. No, it, was, it sucks though. It sucks what, be- what was special about the travel company? Because there are some. Yeah, so basically I'll, I'll give you the, the lowdown. So it started, it actually changed whilst I was on there to, to what it is now. Originally it was, let's go abroad. Let's do a new sort of youth tour operator. Like 1830 is dead. No one thinks it's cool. It's in between us. If you go on an 1830 holiday, or if you go to those places now, it's not very cool. Um, having Mr... I've got a small dick on a t-shirt and Mr. I love big tits and stuff like that. That was the style back then, but it's not anymore. Um, so it's like, what are the people looking for now? What's Gen Z looking for? And it's stuff like, what well, they want experiences. They, they're willing to pay for it. They don't want cheap. They want to really mem- remember where they go. And, and they're all booking it themselves. So there's nothing really for Do you know what? That is people. so true. It is. So when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, it was, 
where can I get the most fucked up yeah. for the least amount of money? Yeah. And it's like, oh, come to Kavos and you can stay in a bin yeah. and shots are a penny. I'm yeah. like, I'm fucking there. Well, Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've worked, I worked eight seasons and, and like six of those were in those places. Um, you know, handing out fines for shit on the roof and stuff like that. So, like that, those days are. How gone. often does that happen? Not shit on the roof. I tell you what, I had a microwave. I was walking. I was walking. This was <laughs> just the way you said that so casually. I was like, no, it's just a few examples of rooftop stuff. I'm walking down the road. My I thought a fucking shitler on the roof. My mate's, <laughs> my mate's hotel. My mate's hotel is there, and there are people literally partying on the roof. And I rang the rep who lives in the hotel. I was like, you know, you should probably go outside. And he was like, why? And then it's like a massive bang. And they're throwing stuff off the roof. So they weren't shitting off the roof, but they were having a massive rave on the roof. Isn't this the plot of The Hangover? No, it's <laughs> just, it's just, it's just this maggot of 20, 20, And they couldn't, they couldn't find the groom. No. And then at the end, yeah, he, was, yeah. he was back on the roof. Except this was everyone on the roof. Because he'd be roofied. Um, but um, uh, nowadays, like, it is true what you're saying. It's holidays for the gram. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, we went... Uh, backpacking in Finland. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, oh, it's actually really, you know, the Finnish culture over there is just so amazing. You know, they have a saying, Flögen Hürgen, which means yeah, like love every day. Does it? Flögen Hürgen. <laughs> I can see you panicking halfway through that. Yeah, <laughs> but in my sure. head, in my head, I was like, Sweden is a very white country. I'll get away with it. Do you yeah, know but you also said Finland, though. That's the worst part. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not all Scandinavians look the same. No. I apologize. Sounds a bit racist to me. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I did a, I did some gigs in Norway and all the, uh, there was like no young people at the gig at all, like at all. And I went to a pub afterwards, uh, £13 for a pint of Carlsberg, lovely. Um, but all the young people came back and I was like, why are you not here? And they were like, oh, what we do is, so this was Bergen or Savanger, I can't remember which one. They got a boat into international waters and then <laughs> they sell the beers for a quid. Yeah, That's and, great. Or whatever the currency is. And then they all get fucked up, come back and then they have their nights out. So... That could have been... Well, the, the idea was we, we noticed that young people were... They're not skint either. A lot of them make money in innovative ways. They've got their own businesses, the content channels, the creators, whatever it is. And there's nothing for them. All the big companies are looking at them going, well, they're skint. They just want a shit holiday as cheap as possible. But actually, they don't. They might book Ibiza for 500 quid, but they'll spend three grand when they're there. Yeah. Um, so you've got rich kids. You've got people who are making their own money at a young age. You've got people with their own businesses. Um, and Gen Z are coming through going, oh, we want to go to these places. Like... Places like Bali, the Maldives, Hawaii, like the places where we wouldn't, tr you wouldn't expect to see loads of young people getting pissed in these places yeah. from the UK. Yeah. And people do it on their own. They book their own flight, they book their own hotel. But then the first thing they do when they get there is try and find someone the same age as them. So we're going to try and create these sort of experiences, but all inclusive as well. So, and also the next level. So instead of arriving in a resort and getting put on a coach with 400, sorry, 40 other miserable people, and there's always one nobody who's always late because they've been fucking lost their shoe in security or something and, and you have to wait for them and you get to resort you get driven around every fucking hotel first instead of that we're just gonna put them in blacked out SUVs and drive them in convoy when they arrive they go when they arrive they have a champagne reception in the hotel like, like Michelle Obama I love that yeah. <laughs> the Michelle Obama treatment these, these things don't cost much it's just that the, the, the industry has been cutting out um, cutting cutting down the prices as much as possible because they want to offer the cheapest holiday and as a result the whole um, experience is affected I have a great story about a couple of years ago when I was in Bali so I was doing a tour of stand-up comedy clubs in Asia, and I decided to stop via Bali. It's a very nice place. Uh, but um, what happened a lot in Bali and what happened a lot in Asia in general is that people would come up to me, see me as a single white Westerner on his own, and assume that it was sex tourism. I mean, if I had to draw a sex tourist, I but, would draw you. <laughs> let's be honest. Well, here's the thing, right, is this only happened in Bali, but it happened about a dozen times. They would come up to me and they would go, Mr. 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 or whatever. I'm not going to do any voice or anything. Mr. 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 Flugen here. They were Finnish. Um, um, and they said, they said, uh, you want uh, you want good time? You want you, you want good time with lady? You want good time with lady? And I go, no. And he'd look and he'd go, you want uh, good time with child? And I go, oh. and I go, no. And he'd look at me every time. They'd look at me as if to say. You do. Like, <laughs> like they look at me as if to say, well, if you're not into it, then yeah, the market's yeah, yeah. gone. You know? I love the idea of you going, no, but have you heard of my Ofsted program plan? <laughs> like, here we go. Pitching it left, right, and center. Wow. Yeah, but it was, it was dodge as fuck. It was yeah, dodge it was as bad. fuck. That's bad. But some of the stuff that I saw in Bali as well, you see like, like street kids and stuff, and you see like pervy old Australian men who were like, oh my, shit, shit on my fucking name, eh? Like that, and it's like, Dis disgusting but it's a beautiful place
<laughs> I thought you said he weren't doing voices. Yeah, no, that's the the was, Aussie was actually was pretty like, good. He wouldn't oh, do an Asian voice, but he did like Flag and Yang, mate. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so you were on you, you you were on the last season. Who else was on yours? Uh we had Lottie Lyon, infamous, Thomas Skinner. So so Thomas Skinner was the, the big oh, dude, sort of Dell boy. Is, is he an idiot? Tom no, yeah. he, he wouldn't have come across an idiot. No, oh, like when you see him, you're like he came across as a lovable sort of um, yeah, yeah. Oh. cheeky chappy. Oh, yeah, fish! Yeah. I think yeah, is okay. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Who else did we have? We had a guy called Dean. We had Gemma Lynn, Pamela, Irish Pamela. Did you have? Did you watch this? No. Did no. you have content? I know. On yours? I know. Kind of the, about of it. So occasionally you might see you're fired, or my wife would watch some yeah, parts yeah. of it, so you kind of see it. But he's kind of been on. He's the kind of guy yeah, that two years will be on Celebrity Coach Trip. He has that vibe <laughs> about him. Do you know that way? Leaving the coach. Yeah. yeah pretty much <laughs> driving it. Um, uh, who, the winner, what was their idea? The bakery, uh, won it? Yeah, bakery. Was it? She, she didn't bake. I remember I said I didn't really watch Oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it fucking called? It was called like something French or something like... Patisserie Valerie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pret-a-mange, I think it was. <laughs> She's doing all right. What was it? On, on the show, it was La Pause. La Pause, yeah. That's what it actually is. Because it, it does sound a bit it's like cold. it does sound a bit like a brothel, the pause, doesn't it? I've been there. I can't remember. It's fucking cold. or a dog groomer. It's bad. The <laughs> pause. The pause. The pause on the tail. <laughs> we do French dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Bichon Frisis solidly. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> what was it like? See when you walk in and you meet someone like Lord Sugar. Let's just call him Alan for the first time. Yeah. Is do you kind of shit yourself a little bit? Or is no, it's it? just very weird. It's like watching a pantomime. So you okay. walk in, there's lights on them. You're sat in front of them, and I'm watching what I what looks like an act, and I'm just like, this is. I'm just sat the whole time going, this is fucking well weird. <laughs> the only time I snapped out of it was when he went, and you're going to South Africa, pack your stuff. So we just got to London. I've just packed to Manchester, driven to Man from Manchester to London, uh, picked up by them in the morning. We get to the studio, two hours messing around filming, get in there, and he goes, right, get your stuff. You got you going to South Africa. We come out of the production company going, 15 minutes we're at Heathrow, and we're just like. I've only just fucking got to London. Though. <laughs> like, I think they want you in that state, though, don't they? Mental. Do you know what? Panic. My but favorite first, first class. No, was it? Oh, was it? Oh, <laughs> the producers were in first class. <laughs> really? I walked past with little beds. I was like, they were in a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> We, we were just like that, flapping. Yeah, yeah, as a team. Yeah. Come on, you're letting the side down. Um, do you know what my favourite bit of The Apprentice is? And I watch for it every episode and it makes my heart sore. It's the bit where at six o'clock in the morning, you get a phone call and he goes, Lord Sugar would like to see you in the bottom of a well in 15 minutes. <laughs> the cars will be ready in 15 minutes. And then you get there and Lord Sugar's, I brought you here to the bottom of a well because a well is dark, perfect for developing film. Go and start a photography <laughs> business. And you're like, what the fuck am I in this well, you daft? Really Take me loose. to Jessup's, you prick. What are you doing? A really loose connection. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah loose. it's how and loose is it, is it, is it, is it an ice skating rink and he went, right, we're doing ice lollies. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that is a stretch, that. that is a stretch. The fuck am I here for? <laughs> I, remember, I remember the call, right? So, you know, you get to answer the phone. Does it yeah. really happen at six in the yeah, morning? Yeah. Oh, but the, night, the night before they go, by the way, the phone might ring tomorrow, which they're not a tie, but they're basically saying, so go bed. Hang about, yeah. so you live there all the time? Yeah, yeah. So you, so, but you, you film one day a week? Because yeah. I thought you were going to film like, like one day a week off. Really? Every day. I th and if you win, you've got to film another day, so most people want to lose. Really? <laughs> if you win, you've got to go and do a treat. Which is not a treat when you want to have a day's rest. No yeah. way. I was going to say, the story of me answering the phone, so... I, I didn't get mine until later on in the show, like for halfway through, and I was absolutely knackered. And they said the phone might ring tomorrow. Like, Please can I answer it? And the girls like cause the floor below us. They all, always beat us to it, and they were like, "Right, you go and get it if you hear it." I heard it. I ran downstairs, half asleep, nearly died on the way down. And I answered it, and there's the woman on the voice, the woman you hear on TV. Yeah, oh, okay. And I was looking around waiting for a producer to be on the phone or something, but it was real. And they were like, "You're going to Surrey," but I heard it as Syria. <laughs> No lie. <laughs> I run I run through the house going, We're going Syria And then all the guys waking up and they're all coming out going, Fuck off. <laughs> and, like, and I was like and I was looking at Jesus going, It's not right, is it? And like, no. And they didn't even say what they said is we're going to Fort Park in Surrey. And all oh. I've heard is Syria because I was half asleep. I just love I just love the idea that you're in the middle of a war zone. Yeah. There's <laughs> rockets flying over and Lord Schilling's going, I want you to get these eleven items up. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be oh, amazing though if one guy had like a full helmet and camouflage red. He was like, right, finally, he just dresses himself. <laughs> this is a task for me. Yeah. No, yeah, no, that was that was weird because obviously you're half asleep, you don't know. But they all start, everyone started laughing at me. Yeah. And there's a few moments like where I can see why. it got cut out. There's another bit where we had to do like um, questionnaires, right? 
We were asking people's opinions on this fragrance. The fragrance was terrible. But I had the marketing board. My job was to go around London and put up a sign and go and speak to people, get market research. I walk over to this couple because they're at the same sort of age we're going for. I'm like, excuse me, can I speak to you about this? I think we're filming for the BBC. Um, you have to ask them that first. And the guys are like, I fucking hate the BBC. I was like, how often have you been on the BBC? Yeah. And he was like, too many times. And just walks off. And I turn around, all the producers laughing at me because they've got an earpiece. They can hear what I'm yeah. saying. And it was, is it Thierry Henry? Yeah. No. No, it was a guy with F. He was an F footballer. Frank Lampard. No. Freddie, Freddie Lundberg. No, he's got a really fit bird on Towie. Oh. Who is that? It's not Terry Henry, is it? It's, um... Right, Bradley Dack is oh. with Olivia Atwood. He's a... Gives you an F. Yeah. Did not expect you to know that. <laughs> like, that was... so, so my missus watches Olivia at home. And it's basically Olivia Atwood, like, I've got to do some jobs today. <laughs> don't know who she is. <laughs> she was on uh, Love Island. Ah. I've, I've got to oh, do some jobs. Oh, yeah, I do know who she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Bradley Dack is a football player, plays yes. for Blackburn. And he's uh, basically, what happens is he was injured for like 12 months, literally had six games back. And he was like, oh, I'm playing really well again. And then got injured for another 12 months. So he's oh, I feel really sorry for you, babes. You know, it's just <laughs> fucking perfect dog shit. I can't have a life thinking, this is how bad I am. So a famous footballer. No. Right, he's got a bird. Who's, it's called Jess. Jess in Towie. So Jess Towie, girlfriend. Jess I didn't Towie. imagine that this was going to turn into football uh, trivia. I, I, don't, don't, I, I didn't know, imagine I, didn't, I would get it wrong. That's the worst part. No, because that's no, because she's with... Um, Is he English? Oh, right. Like, the, yeah. the guy. So the dude's English. He's with F, and he's really famous. First name or second name again with F? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> this is how bad I am with football. So they're all laughing at me. I thought it was Thierry on me, but it's not actually when I think about it. It's not. It begins with F. Is he on, like, begins with F? I'm going to say, I don't know anymore. Yeah. Footballer. There, Ferdinand. Ah. So I, I went up to, so I went up to real Ferdinand. <laughs> and I asked him to sit part anyway. That, that's said, a good story though. That is good. What way would you ever say Rio Ferdinand begins with F? Do you know what I remember? It's just Ferdinand the Bull. Is that a kid's book? Ferdinand the Bull. Right, okay. So F for Ferdinand. Yeah. Big football you, fan? You see, you see, I that's mean, how I remember it. <laughs> like, there is no memory. I don't know nothing about football. I'm this bad with it. So I didn't recognise him. I sort of thought he looked a bit familiar, but his girlfriend was on Tower. He was real Ferdinand. They're all laughing at me. He's there swearing at the BBC. And I'm just like, what do I do now? Because we're going to cut that bit out. We move on. I was like, okay, sweet. That's the first so person funny. I went to speak to was real Ferdinand. And That's amazing. Like, also, just sums up London. Do you know for what, me. as well, is he would think that you would know who he was. He would think that I'm trying to get him to sign up to some sort of Red Cross charity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I went, excuse me, sir, can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, shit, yeah. In a suit in the middle of London in the hot weather. <laughs> I bet was a right to Fucking hell. <laughs> shit. Oh, so good. Oh, mate. Have you ever met anyone, like, who's the most famous person that you've ever met? Uh, Paul McCartney, probably. Fuck off. <laughs> Paul McCartney owned the uni I went to. So, like, he gave me my degree and all this kind of stuff. And uh, we, like, uh, I, I was trying to, like, have banter with him. And, oh, he was not up for it at all. At really? all, Yeah. When uh, you were doing your uh, ceremony, did he come on and go, get your degree, <laughs> get your degree? <laughs> no, but it would be amazing. We, we used to get, we used to get like, um, they would get like master classes in and it was like John Hart would just come in and talk to your Alan Rickman and all this kind of Fuck stuff. Fuck off. So my old flatmate is now an MBE um, and she's got this amazing charity. She wrote to like 300 celebrities asking for help with their charity. It's called Live the Dream. And Alan Rickman was the only one that got back. And then she was like, oh, if you're ever in Liverpool, joining me up. He was like, yeah, I'm coming. Do you want to go for lunch? So he just came into our flat. And like my flatmate, I will never forget this. My flatmate is called Louis. He uh, is the keys player for Niall Horan. So he's on tour with Niall Horan just now. And um, he walked in and he had a scar above his head. And then we were like, don't mention the scar. And then Alan Rickman was like, oh, how'd you get the scar to Louis? And he's like, oh, true story. Glassed myself, didn't I? <laughs> and they just walked away. It's <laughs> like, generally true. He kissed someone else's girlfriend and decided to punish himself by glassing himself. And that is now in the magnet, which is now Hot Water Comedy Club. So every time I go in there, I think of... That is... is so he kissed someone else's girlfriend. Yep. And as a as a form of penance... Punishment himself, yep. It's like Dobby, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You've not, you've not met him, but that is so bang on. He is so like Dobby. So I'm going, pads. I, ironically, if he had his own sock, he wouldn't be cheating on other people's <laughs> yeah. girlfriends. He was, uh, yeah, he would do. I mean, what sort of like weird that. sort of self-flagellation is that? He'd a proper scar That's above his eye. That's nuts. That's like, absolutely fucking nuts. But, like, see, when you meet him, 
I wouldn't even make your top ten stories of him because he's oh just a f- he's he's an idiot but also a legendary human. Uh, but yeah, who's the most famous you've met? I'm trying to think. I think nobody is ever. The, oh no, no. Uh, taking comics out of the equation, nobody. Like I don't think I've ever met anyone. For Russell Grant, I met when I was like a child. <laughs> Do you know Russell? No, that is. No. He's an astrologer, and so why would anyone know that? I was on holiday in an Wales, astrologer. and um, he was he, he was there. Was at some point. Mate, like your that. life Russell. is so bleak, and it's dreadful. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. right. So here's the thing, right? I live in. I'm from Preston. Preston, famously. Well, Lu- Louis from Leyland. What is he? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, now, yeah, now yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, So Preston famously doesn't have really anyone famous to have come from there. Um, so uh, Freddie Flintoff, I've met Freddie Flintoff. There you go. That's okay. the that's the best. That's babe. It's nothing compared to Paul fucking yeah. McCartney, is it? I, uh, One of the greatest musicians of all time versus was, a dude with a fucking bat. I once took a piss next to Marty Palo, and, uh, um, <laughs> and I was like, I'm "Did gonna, you? I'm gonna look at his knob." Did so you? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, "I'm not gonna get another chance Mate, to do this." If a little dribble came out, you go, "Are oh, uh, your pants are wet, wet, wet?" I uh, <laughs> <laughs> then moonwalk out of the fucking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You must have met like before. I'm, I, see, I was thinking. So since the show, I've met quite a few cool people. But who's who's the coolest you've met since the show? Um, Let me guess. Begins with F <laughs> or something like that. No, <laughs> no, because I didn't really meet him, did I? I met like different charity events and stuff. I met like different cast and TV and things, which is quite cool. But I think the the the, the coolest person I met was Alan Carr. Nice. Ironically, wasn't cool. So this is before the show. So I actually signed up for this thing where. I saw it advertised, it was like, surprise someone special. Right? And I was abroad working as a rep. Met this girl, she'd gone home, and we were sort of like, we're, we're gonna be together, we're gonna be together. And she was on the coach, and you go like, bye. <laughs> Wave each other. And as soon as she goes, you're like, bye. And you go back out and find a new girlfriend. But this one was different. I was like, oh, I really liked her. And I was like, it's proper moping that, you know, dogs don't eat food. I was like, ah, for about a week in Ayanapa, I wouldn't have sex with anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the same thing. Um, just sat at home licking his balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just set you up for this. Anyway, yeah. so, so anyway, quickly, uh, so I sent this thing, I was surprised him, and I was like, oh, I, I, I applied for it. And they went, well, what's your story? And I went, well, basically, I met this girl. She was amazing. She's gone to the UK. I'm in Napa for the summer. She, it's, it's June, it's June, and, uh, and I'd like to come, I'd like to surprise her. So they flew me back from Napa for one day and one night. So they flew me back for the night. The next day I was on TV on Alan Carr. It was called Alan Carr's Grease Night Live. So I had to dress like a T-bird and we blagged her to go saying she got free tickets. She went down there. It was the Canadian uh, comedian. Uh, Catherine Ryan. Yeah, she was there with Alan Carr. And I went to do a dance routine. I came out of these, uh, the T-birds were dancing like Grease Lightning. And I came out and it's the, everyone turned around. I was just there in the audience and I had to ask her out to prom. And that was, oh like, my was I had to give like a rose and a rest. It was dead romantic. It was like the most- I mean, most it sounds fucking horrific. It sounds nice. horrific. Romantic thing I've ever done. And I just remember I met Alan Carr. Did you say yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and we stayed together after that for like two years. But I met Alan, I met Alan Carr and I remember, because I said he was really sweaty. The studio was roasting. He was pissing sweat down his face and he was professional. So he wasn't letting it show because he knew the camera couldn't see it. Was I was looking at him, just dripping off his glasses. <laughs> and I just went, are you okay? And I forgot we were filming. It was live. So I was like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. fine. I was like, you you really sweating, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the camera sort of zooms in at this point, and he's got like under boob sweat, and it's oh. all to sweat. And then he has to do a segment talking about how he's sweating, and then the next day in the papers it was uh, viewers um, worried about Alan Carr's disgusted health. of the sweaty car, worried about Alan Carr's health and all this sort of stuff because he was sweating. And he shows a clip of me going. Uh, uh, talking to him. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, just that's a really, that's a really random one, but um, at least yeah, interacted with him and made him look like he had. Did, they, did you diabetes. did you get to keep the T boy outfit? I nicked I nicked the trend. Oh, I tell you, I did meet the real pink lady. Um, which called the really really quiet one. Do you know off the real Grease film? Yeah, they had her come down. I can't. Oh, remember. I, well, I know. I, remember I know the one there. you mean who lives in. She lives, I think she lives in the UK. Really She's on telly all the time. Spoken. Begins with an F. I think it might be Frenchie. I think yes, it could be, yeah, yeah. It could be, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was going through in my head. I was that like, was yeah. that's where the left would work. I yes. almost Fuck it, that was like, real. No, no, <laughs> Frenchie. And she, oh, showed, she showed me like where she spilled mustard on her on the top when she was filming in the real Grease. And that was really cool for me because obviously you watched Grease growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Frenchie. That is cool. I think that's a cool story. So on The Apprentice, um, I've, I've always thought this with all reality TV shows. So I'm obsessed with reality TV. I, I watched all of the fucking... What, do you know what my favourite one at the moment is? Glow Up. Uh, have you ever seen Glow Up? 
Is that the makeup artist? It's the makeup one, right? I've not seen it. So what I like the most about it, what <laughs> I, I like mean, the, we both need it. <laughs> let's be honest. What I like the most about it, right, is you know when you get ten people in the room and it's like it's a talent one, right? Yeah. You can tell week one they all come in thinking I've got a chance to win this, mm, yeah, and then yeah. they do one task and they go, "There's no fucking way I'm winning." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, and you see in some of their faces they go, "Oh, I'm fucked." Yeah. So when you went in, how long did it take you to go? You're not winning. You're not winning. You're not winning. You're much better than me. Do you know what? There's a point, right? There's a point, and I, I, I just said it. It was after I, we'd won a, a task. I kept obviously. I didn't win them all. I lost quite a few tasks. In fact, episode one, I was project manager and I lost. Which is usually you get fired for that. That's a bold, you got bold. told. You got told off as well, yeah, didn't and you? And I went mad in the boardroom. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, two, yeah, yeah. Of These two lads. Yeah, they were being little dickheads, and they were just going. Rah, rah, rah. I just went right. Shut up. I didn't swear, but I was like, shut up. Like, you're an idiot and you're an idiot now. Just fucking own what you've done. Because obviously everyone's trying to be a little bitch, but I've always been, if you mess up, you put your hands up and got messed up. Yeah, yeah. If you can't do that, it's going to it's gonna make me feel This is one of the things that they always do on The Apprentice, isn't it? Where they go, are you happy with me making that decision? And then the other make person goes, I, well, it's your decision to yeah. approve my decision, but my, and it's like just yeah, one yeah. of you fucking take it. Yeah. It's because everyone's scared of what they're going to say in the boardroom. Totally. Don't worry about that shit. If you're not good enough to, to get through it without without worrying about that, then you're probably not good enough to get the investment and do anything well in business anyway. Because you're playing seeming, to lose. You're, you're playing yeah. to lose, but not get evicted. Yeah. It, I don't know if this happens to you, but I forget what I say all the time. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, see if I was in the boardroom and they, someone was like, oh, well, Ray said that he was going to do this and he didn't. I'd be like, no, I didn't. But then the fear that they filmed it all. Yeah. I would just have, I would just accept anything that people said. Do you have to try and remember everything you've done? Uh, no, like you, if you've messed up, you know, you're like, oh, that's going to bite me in the ass later. But okay. there's things that you think, oh, I'm really worried now. And then that never gets brought up again. But then there's things that oh. producers, you wouldn't even expect it. It was something really small you did and it gets magnified. And then Lord Sugar bring it up in the board and you're like, oh, this is a storyline we're going with. Okay, cool. Yeah, I wasn't ready for this. I see. So so, so you're trying to guess the storyline that they're going with. Yeah, so the, obviously everyone's got their own thing haven't they they've all got their own journey and things and their producers are trying to highlight and magnify that in a very short space of time they're not not it's not particularly scripts or anything but they look for things that they're going to write we're going to use that in the boardroom that's going to be lewis's thing so well, i'm trying to worry i'm trying to wonder okay what might they bring up what might be my issue what might i've done well there's episodes on the show where it shows me to be the savior of the whole entire thing and i didn't do anything and right. there's ones where i actually saved everyone's ass and it wasn't even shown really so it sounds very tiring it is. Like, uh, that's the main thing i was just knackered like just the thought of constantly going, how are they going to shaft me this time? Like, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for what? How, how long is the filming process? Like a month or something like that? Oh, it's like uh, two and a half months. Oh, um, fucking yeah. hell. I was going to say, with the, you answered your question there was, um, how long time you? So I was about halfway through and I just went, I've got a good shot here. Right. And I noticed when other people started saying to me, I think you've got a good shot. So I felt like I was one of the stronger players. The problem was I knew my business plan was an idea. So all the time I was going through this process thinking, if they don't like the idea, because it's not a business, it's not established, it's just pointless. All this is pointless. Yeah. So it was a bit of a downer, but I tried to ignore that. And when I got there to the end, that was the case. And then slowly but surely, the boys' rooms, slowly but surely, the boys' rooms all started emptying out. So I was the last boy left in the process. So eventually, it was me with this massive floor in a mansion, just to myself. You could hear the producers coming upstairs, talk to me. I'd be lying there in my, my kingdom, and you just hear me going, all the way across. And I could hear him coming from it because it was all mine. Did you know the person that Class. won? Did you think that she was going to win? Um, I, I had them two pegged from the start because they both had established businesses. They both seemed to be quite strong candidates. They're both like sure of themselves. Yeah. Weren't afraid to take risks, that sort of stuff. So I had them two pinned. There's a third one, Pamela. Uh, basically, it was three, those three girls. That Pamela was, was the blonde, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, those yeah. three ahead of me was the ones I had pinned from the start. I even said it in the boardroom. I was like, yeah, no, I thought them two were going to win. And Lord Sugar's like, why are you here? And I was like, well, I thought I'd stick around. Yeah. yeah. What do you want me to do? I'm like, on, leave halfway <laughs> through? I'll just quit. Like, I'm on telly, mate. Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? I'm having a why am day. I here? Also as well, you would have fucking rinsed me. Yeah. If I'd have said at the end of one task, uh, listen, Lord Sugar, I yeah. think there's better candidates yeah. than me. Yeah. I'm leaving. He would have turned yeah. around and go, what the fucking hell do you mean? But also, he's not bringing any business ideas to the table. So why is he there? <laughs> like, if you think about it. He's it not. I didn't particularly think they were better. I just, I just knew they had strong businesses and I thought, He's going to, I think with investment is you want to invest in a business that you know is going to bring a return. So mine was a, uh, a long shot in the hope that maybe he wanted to get involved in travel and maybe he'd take a risk on not getting a return for a while versus just taking some half of someone else's business. Yeah. But I think that's a bit rough as well, taking half of your business. Because you've got, if, say they've been established for two or three years and he goes, sweet, I'll have half of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That's a bit shit. It's like, almost like he knows what he's doing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, well, do you know what? From his perspective, for the, for the young people, for, really. for, for his perspective, right, is it's, 
you don't want to back a failing business, not just because you'll lose the money, obviously, but imagine the headlines if it's Lord Sugar sinks a quarter of a million pounds into, you know, Lewis's travel company, goes bust six months later, then he looks like a bellend. Mm. So I bet it's more about that. Like, I bet it's more about him just sort of backing the safe option every time. They don't ever do, like, you know how most reality shows do, three years later, here's what's happened. I imagine they've, not, they've not done one of them with The Apprentice because I, I think might, yeah. it's probably not been that good. To be, to be fair, to be fair, ITV can't do much of those. <laughs> to be, to be, hey, what are you talking about? You could definitely do Tipping Point. <laughs> That'll be fine. Be all right. So, uh, yeah. I think I think I think if you were to look back, there's a few that I just don't, I mean they don't seem to be doing well to me. They seem to be okay, um, but I think once all their spotlight's gone, they're just regular old businesses. Genuinely, see for Apprentice like. Because you are a good-looking guy. What part of it was, like, business idea, but what part of it also, like, boost my profile, Instagram I, followers? I, I actually wish. I, it sounds silly, but I didn't even think about that sort of stuff. Because, right, I've always been an apprentice fan. And since I was 21 years old, I went, right, I'm going to start a business. I fucked off working abroad. I went to study business at uni. They said, why are you here? First day one. I used to do a foundation degree first. Day one, why are you here? I want to start a business one day. You don't need to study business. I went, why would I want to be the dumbest guy in the room? So I started studying. Then I went and did a business degree, then a master's degree in business. I was fully focused on starting a business, well, business okay. marketing. So that was my pathway. So and that, that was an opportunity that came up and I'd been freelancing for a few years. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'm actually at the point where I can go for this. Didn't expect to get on there, got on there. And I treat it like a job application. I treat it like I wanted to do this for business. I completely forgot about all the fun. In fact, I could have had loads more fun with it. I could have taken the piss a bit more, you know, maybe had a bit of banter with other people. But I just, I just didn't. And I feel that was a missed opportunity. But at the same time, I'm, I'm happy that, that I didn't because I came, I came across as, oh, he was there to try and, yeah, 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 like you came across well on yours and do you ever worry what would have happened if you'd have came across like a right fucking idiot so you got i mean at the moment you're a businessman you've got yeah. businesses you've got business ideas what what about if you'd have made a huge stupid blunder or you'd have done something potent you could have nerfed your career before you'd even started I, well i did i did i messed up with marketing tasks and stuff like that but I think I don't, I don't really worry about that. Like, I didn't worry at the time either. I was just like, it is what it is. But if you come across that, like, you do something silly. Like, um, one of the girls was accused of being racist because she was texting someone something stupid. If you do thick stuff like that without using your brain, then you kind of deserve whatever you get. Yeah. If you're an idiot. Yeah. You deserve it. Yep. Um, so do you think then, and this is sort of the overarching theme of this, if there is even a theme, do you think that 40 these, minutes in. Yeah, 45. <laughs> mate, it's an Edinburgh show. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, it was all banter, yeah. and now there's 10 minutes of theme, and then <laughs> the next 10 minutes are going to be callbacks, and then I'll win an award. Um, I feel like that's a personal attack on me, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell we'll, we'll, we'll get someone to dub in sign language we'll be fucking sound mate dub in like. <laughs> yeah maybe not dub in sign language oh. um, so right um, do you think that like these sort of TV production companies do you think that they have a responsibility to the people that are on so let's say uh, on yours there was somebody who messaged something that was construed that was the biggest fucking pile of shit by the way so do, do you know no, about this? No. So there was uh, a WhatsApp group between all of them, and there was a, um, I think she was like an Asian Indian woman, something like that, and uh, she, she was very up herself. She was very, uh, she grandiose on a high horse, whatever, in this WhatsApp, and one of the other person said, all right, Gandhi, like, as in, all right, person who thinks that they're doing best for everybody type thing, screenshotted, racist, all I mean, she the... did message after that going, I'm going to kick your fucking head in, rah, rah, rah. So, I mean, she was being, did she? being very aggressive towards her as well. Did she? Oh, yes. Inside scoop. I, Love I that. Think, no, no, it wasn't. I wasn't it was in the papers. I, was a... I wouldn't say anything inside. Yeah. <laughs> but the point, the point is, if you're silly enough to do that, like, I don't think I'm dumb enough to message someone who's Indian and be like, Gandhi, yeah. whilst I'm on TV. I mean, you're a person that doesn't like yeah. me anyway. Yeah. Like, that's pretty stupid, isn't you it? You were saying it's a piece of shit or whatever, that kind of thing, but... Like, listen, like that's incredibly stupid, and also it's on the line, isn't it? It's like I don't know b because the it's it's quite obvious that she's not saying that with a racial connotation for me. She, but she could have been being as in the philosophical. She said something like I don't know. Some she said some sort of sentence before like a quote, and then sort of shut. Oh, uh, okay. So, so so it could have been like oh she's she's saying kind of like philosophical because she's yeah, trying yeah, to do yeah. a quote. That's how most people would have seen it, but there's still. The, the rest of people jump on it and be like, now she's being racist. When they all lived together, did they not? were they not constantly at each other's fucking throats every day? 
No, it was quite a good laugh, actually. It was fun in the house. There was a lot of fucking weird stuff, though. Did you get given booze? No, you're not allowed to drink. At all? No. Wait, uh, uh, no, I mean, that. I don't have a business idea, but now I'm definitely was, not going on the show. <laughs> so I was in, I was in a, we were in an office filming, and it was late, and we were the last ones finished. We'd finished early, and everyone else was still filming. The production, production were all over there. Now, this office in particular had a drinks trolley that goes around every Friday full of wine. We stumbled across the drinks trolley, and there was no one watching us, and they were over there. So we just literally sat next to the trolley and drank as many bottles of wine <laughs> as we could get down our throats in about, we had about an hour to ourselves. They came back, we were fucking hammered. Like, I've I've, I've, I've a yeah. Yeah. It was like Give me sugar lord now. <laughs> we were literally talking like toddlers. And we were just like, you can't even tell us anyway, because we drank anything anyway. And they were like, right, get up, you walk, you have to do the walk to the car to leave. Oh, I fucking took ages. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was just three people stumbling. <laughs> And it was like whichever was the least stumbly was the one they used. Would you, if you'd have done something, the wrong way, like, if you'd have done something though, <laughs> the car is like, I went that way. let's say two and a half months you were filming. If you'd have had one moment of madness where you did something stupid, you messed up. Would you expect the production company to sort of help you out? Um, yeah, I think so. Like the thing is, I think there's an expectation there that you're going to be looked after in that sense. But at the end of the day, I the way I see it now is actually they expect you to be able to look after yourself as an adult. But you, because it's a new world to you, you look at it as though, oh, you look for someone to help you because you need to be guided through it because it is like you never experienced this before. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, there's, a, there's unfortunately, they expect you to be used to it and you expect them to look after you for every moment. So actually, it's a weird one. And the apprentice as well, they take everything off you. They strip your phone, wallets, everything. So you actually have no responsibilities. Therefore, you almost are like a toddler again. You're like, you see, you see like when you get like Love Island just now is going out. And yeah. Now they're talking about everyone needs to go through a psychological evaluation and all this kind of stuff. Did you get anything like that? Yeah, and no, but it was it's sort of box ticking. And I think to your point, you're saying like, should they look after? I, everyone always asks this question, like, yeah, maybe they should. I think they should personally. Uh, what could, what more could they do? I don't know, but whatever they're doing right now is not very good. So I know, speaking of psychological evaluation, right? So every year, as a comedian, you get a message from Britain's Got Talent either through fucking Facebook. Or, uh, you know, like through any social media Even or an you. email or something. Mate, all the fucking time. Really? All the fucking time. And every year I say, guarantee me to go through and I'll do it. And every year they never get back to me. I say, guarantee, give me a written guarantee yeah. that you won't fuck me over and I'll do it. And they never, ever do. That's the risk, in it? You could go in there as one of their stories that they were going to give you. A, they're going to give you yeah, a plot. Yeah. They're going to give you a, a new book. But the thing is, is it's so easy to make a comedian look shit. Because yeah. all you do, let's say I fucking, I do my routine. I smash it in front of all these people. The only thing they need to do is to remove that laughter. Yeah. I literally... Press fuck it one one button, click yeah. fucking mute, and I'm there going, hey, it's great to be here, and I look shit. You can't <laughs> you can't make a fucking dance troupe look shit if they're not shit. Do you know what you I mean? Cut their music. Oh, you hear his the feet, the feet squeaking like <laughs> yeah, 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 just like like playing just, just put a laughter track all the way through. Double loads of farts yeah. in, so it's diversity doing like a split. Oh no! <laughs> if they get farting dancers, that's <laughs> four yeses straight through, isn't it? <laughs> That's, you got to think about the business. <laughs> Interesting that they do edit it like that as well. So the reactions that you, you know, for example, the apprentice that I saw in real life were not the, re the reactions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. weird. So the back of a moment when you're having a re great pitch or whatever, and it pans to their face and they're all just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was filmed before the pitch. Yeah, it's just yeah. really weird. So you're like wankers. They're clever as fuck though. They, yeah. they know exactly what they're doing. So anyway, right. This So one year, this was maybe a couple of years ago, there was a comedian who was like, fuck it, I'll go on, I'll do Britain's Got Talent, right? Now, this comedian is, I'm not going to mention his name, uh, he is a gay comic whose act is very, uh, very much around how much he'd like to fuck members of the audience. It's one of those kind of like... It's like Julian Clary, if he hadn't yeah. had a wank. Do you know what I mean? Like properly, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh, you know, okay. that, that's his bit. It's not suitable. His act isn't suitable for telly. So they were like, oh, we'd love to have you on. You're perfect. You're exactly the kind of energy. And he's like, my act is about fisting people. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, don't worry about that. We'll take all of that out. Snip, snip, snip. We'll do a clean set. We're not bothered about the jokes. We want you. Your essence is what we want. We haven't had someone like you before. They give him the pitch. He believes it, right? He goes on, does a clean set of his act for the first time in his life, and it does not fucking work out. Oh. Or he da dies on his ass. A, a career-ending death, right? Comes off stage, and a woman from ITV comes up to him 
And she's like, hi, my name's whatever. Um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, you know, blah, 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 blah. And she's asking him these questions. And this dude's smart enough to realize that this isn't some fucking showrunner, like, like just formalizing a few things. This is the show's psychologist. So what he does is he realized that he'd done really badly. And so he started telling her about how much he wanted to kill himself. Never went out. Oh. Never I went mean, out. That's such a bleak thing to have to do. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? But at the moment, he probably did feel that way. Yeah. Like, if it had gone out, I'd imagine he could have felt yeah. like that. So, oh, that's so bleak, it man. Isn't it? But if, if, if it was, again, if it's career ending and stuff like that, then that's the question, isn't like People... The thing is, a lot of people that go on TV have actually got fuck all going for them. The majority of people that you see, you know, in on, on reality shows, they are literally going to do nothing. Have else you been asked them. to do any other shows off the back of it? Yeah, I, following the show, there was a, like, quite a few things came out of the woodwork. It's always fucking dating and stuff. They always try and put me in, like go go on this program and date a bird. Would you not do Love Island? I'm too old for Love Island. I'm 30 years old. Yeah, you are too. Old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty. Yeah. Do you know what? I was when you did the John Travolta thing you were talking about earlier. It yeah. sounds like Secret Crush. Like if you want, that's the bottom of your guilty pleasures now. What's secret crush? Someone fancies oh, yeah. someone <laughs> and they have to go meet them in a bar, but the other person doesn't know who they're meeting, so they've just been told someone fancies them, but they don't, and then they meet and it's either great or really awkward. <gasps> and a lot of the time it's like a guy who drinks in a bar Do and has seen the barmaid for the last five years and stuff. That is literally how the dating show Killer came about. What's, what's Killer? I don't know Killer. So w without wanting to sound like a fucking serial killer podcast... So there's a serial... Well, he's not really a serial killer. only one person. So... Oh, he, you were saying um, then, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just kill her then. Yeah, and we all make mistakes. <laughs> he's in glass himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Denise! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, it's all right, officers. I've, I've, I've punished myself. No need to put me in handcuffs. I've glassed myself. I think we can agree that that punishment is enough. So, yeah. right, what it was is it was a... I think it was Maury or something like that. Or No, no it was Jesse Jade... Something like that. It was a big thing in America, right? And th they had a segment on, like a talk show, like a Jeremy Kyle thing, where it was people meeting their crush, right? And this guy came on, uh, and he thought that he was meeting a crush that was like a, a woman at a bar. That's how they'd set it up. And he, um, in the end, it was his next-door neighbour who was a guy. And that oh, was the thing. Okay. And so they put it on, and they were like, actually... John's got something for you, and John's like, I just think you're really attractive, and I'd love to take you for a drink and all this. And the dude looks awkward as fuck, but he laughs it off perfectly. Like, 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 literally, he's like, oh man, oh what? I didn't like, and he looks like he takes it really well. He's not angry or anything like that. Literally, that night, went home, went straight into his neighbor's um, house and killed him. <laughs> yeah, defo. Her show got taken off the air after that. Like, like it suffered massive. Yeah, to, to be fair. One murder's enough to take a show <laughs> off, isn't it? <laughs> Call me old-fashioned. But know, supermarket sweep, you walk in, there's a body. Do you know what? Ryland's not getting another series. I swear, right, you know Jeremy Kyle? Yes. Right? I swear that they had a contingency plan in place. I reckon they knew that at some point, someone was going to kill themselves. Do you think they did a, because you're talking about duty of care, do you think something like Jeremy Kyle cared about that kind of side of it? Oh, no, they only cared about not getting caught. Yeah, right, yeah, so li the literally, the way that they went, we're taking all the shows off air, we're stopping the show, we're uh, taking everything offline. They did it within two days. They they had a plan where, I, I honestly reckon every season they went, just not this season. Let's get one more season out. Let's get one more season out. They fucking knew that it was going to happen eventually. Just bought 28 lie detectors. Come on, <laughs> not this year. Not this year. <laughs> but I, I see, I reckon... Uh, that some shows, I, I, I flip between not knowing whether or not they should have a duty of care or they shouldn't. Because part of me thinks if you go on The Apprentice or if you go on Love Island, you know what you've signed up for. Yeah. You literally know what it is. Uh, who's, who's going on The Apprentice? Do, do you though? Like, because I'd imagine, like, you. You know how sometimes <clears throat> when you do something, you might get a few negative comments and stuff like that. I've been doing a bit of Sky Sports recently yeah. and I've been slagging off England football team. So every time I get some negative comments about that, and that's just a five minute segment of me slagging Mark Wright. If you're on prime time telly for an hour, five nights a week, yeah, the, you must switch your phone back on and you must have 
by that time, tens of thousands of negative comments. You don't sign up for that part, do well, you? Weird, weird thing about The Apprentice as well, it's not on for three months. So you go back to reality. You can't tell them where you've been. Yeah, so how, what's, what's the gap? So it's about three months. It's a secret. What so you, you go, you go back people? in August and you're on TV in October. Yeah. So I went back to the gym as normal. Everyone's like, where have you been? And I was like, it's busy. I you know, have like, been like, around. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the obvious. Yeah. Because before then I said, if I go missing, I'm, I'm interviewing The Apprentice. If I go missing, you know where I went? Yeah, you came okay. back and they were like, where have you been? I'm like, yeah. Working. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Anyway, um, without so my phone for two and a half months. <laughs> it comes yeah. out in October and all of a sudden. Proper then, jail then, vibes. I love it. Well, the, the weird thing about that is obviously you've forgotten about most of what's happened and you can't remember it and then you watch it and then you've got to deal with it. And that sort of negative stuff happens straight away. But what I was going to say when I said it was really weird in the house, you got to remember these casting people are trying to cast fun people, right? Now, they want dynamic personalities. There's a border, right? There's a, there's a thin line between having a personality and having a personality disorder, or having something that's not quite going on right, and- Mate, you know, we work in comedy, yeah, we know like, this. Like, so like, I, think, I think people who want to be accepted are drawn to these things because they want to be accepted, but actually then they're not ready for the, the not to not be accepted, and it goes to it goes a complete full circle on them. Do you know what it is, is I'm such a nobad. If one of my friends went on The Apprentice, and like, he wasn't allowed to tell anybody, like, where have you been for two and a half months? I, I'd be like, ah, oh, did you not hear? He nonced a dog. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, just, like, like, yeah. He's been away he for wanked, six weeks and you're spray painting yeah, words in wanked, his garage. He wanked like, a dog off and he got two and a half months. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he's not allowed to talk about it, but he wanked a dog off. And then it comes to the telly and that's front page of the news of the world. Or whatever. <laughs> that point, one, of, so one of the girls, right, it's this it's pretty much like that. So one of the girls came into the house and you're only allowed to tell one person where you're going, you know, in case people think you died. Um, <laughs> she, she, she lives with her she lives with her husband tells her husband husband goes cool no worries I'll keep your secret she goes off parents come round come see the daughter mm. oh you can't really see her she's busy okay sweet we'll come back next week come back next week where's the daughter she's not here today oh. they start getting suspicious because he's acting really weird because he's obviously lying yeah. you can tell he's lying the story doesn't quite match yeah. up I mean he's put a new patio down yeah. you're like oh god <laughs> <laughs> so they ring the police so they ring the police the police come round they confront him what have you done with our daughter? Oh, no. <laughs> that is amazing. But you would think yeah. that as well, would you? And obviously he's then to please us. I just talked to you in private. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, so he funny. Like he'd actually murder it. Like, Do just... you know Karen Brady? <laughs> like, let's just bring it Yeah, down. all the time, Nick's in the corner making <laughs> notes. <laughs> but he, he was like defending the secret, but obviously it's a point where the family thought that he'd murdered his, yeah. his, his wife and then police came around. And even he's like, well, It would have been an amazing commitment if he'd like gone to jail yeah. and like it goes on telly and she comes back and then he gets freed like Deirdre Rashid yeah. and like all oh, this kind of campaign about it. Did you not like, um, <laughs> did you not like, could he not have given her hints without saying like, she's on the, the thing is, like be like, oh, well she's not. <laughs> I think because he's trying to protect the Herbie on the show. So it's that much of a secret that you sign a contract. Who did you tell? It comes out. I told fucking everyone. <laughs> I was like, if you're not, I said to you before, I was like, if I go missing, you'll know where I am. Because obviously at that point, you, you find out you're going to be on the show and you're going with a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I told everyone, I was like, oh, I might be on the apprentice. When I was pissed, even when I came back out, it was supposed to be a secret for like two months. And I was walking around when I was drunk going, I'm on the apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> my mates, my mates in London going, short, you can't say that. I'm like, yeah, I just watch. You see, yeah. you see, I'm not an idiot. Watch TV. Uh, it was so stuff like funny. that in the middle of arguments. I'd be like, I'm going to fucking be on the apprentice. Also, generally, if I if you were walking down a street in London shouting, I'm going to be on the apprentice, I wouldn't even think of the TV show. I thought you'd started working for four years for Babcock or something like that. <laughs> that guy fucking loves electricity. Like, that's all I would think. Do you know right. what though is like, I do think with with like Love Island and Apprentice, like they're different gravy than um, Britain's Got Talent or X Factor or Jeremy Kyle or stuff like that. Because the thing is, is The Apprentice, they so they, when they started, they had businessmen. Yeah. It was yeah, 10 yeah. businessmen. And then they had eight businessmen and two weirdos. And then they had like six and four, and they kept tinkering with like that 16, balance. Yeah. yeah. In that case, and now it's, it's, yeah, it's 16 on, maybe five of them are normal, and the rest are like, Ugh, you know also, what I mean? TV's progressed in that time, isn't it? Well, like, but they, they, they always have idiot, they, they don't have absolute lunatics yeah. on. Whereas X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and Jeremy Kyle, they all have lunatics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think they're different. And I think that with, especially with X Factor and all those and um, Jeremy Kyle especially, there definitely is a duty of care. Definitely. Yeah. I think with The Apprentice as well, so like I said, we were talking about the types of people that go for these sort of shows. Some people are actually borderline 
like they might snap or they might not be able to handle it or they might actually have something slightly where they're craving attention and they like for example you see these Instagram influencers that have hundreds of thousands of uh, followers they might not think they could look, look good they might just do it because they're trying to feel like they do and they'll they're the ones that are always negative about their own body images yeah, yeah. Like that. so if, but if you do that you get a tirade of negative comments come out here and you've never done that with that before you can actually have a breakdown and even during the show the amount of stress and lack of sleep and the pressure you're under i saw people starting to have issues and i was saying you know, i'd say to the the, the the production team by the way i've just walked this is a true story this just walked past the wardrobe and one of the cast is in there rocking. No word of lies, sat in there like that. No. Also, it was, a, it was a mansion wardrobe, it was a big fucking wardrobe. Yeah, why do you need a wardrobe? <laughs> that's yeah. not, that's not. It wasn't like, it wasn't like. Have they like, got enough yeah. room? They have great, <laughs> lovely. Why, why do you need a massive wardrobe when all you wear suits? Like, well, no, it was, like, it, was a, it was a fancy mansion, it had a lift and everything, but it's this walk-in. It a lift? Yeah, it had walk-in, walk, mate, it was amazing. But, but anyway, it, we're, we're, we're allowed to go on a lift. <laughs> Talk about duty of care. We're allowed to go on a lift for safety reasons. Why? I was like, what do you think's going to happen? Realistically, yeah. between floor three and two, what do you think's going to happen? But you can like, go on a flight to South Africa. We're not allowed to, we're not, we're not allowed to <laughs> That's a safety in that. I was the only one that was land the pool for filming. Why? Well, to be fair, there was a blind candidate. So they, they <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds like oh, a joke. Yeah. Please elaborate on that. So there was one blind candidate who was 16. Right. I mean, so I, I you were the designated it like a swimmer. Really joke about a blind person. I didn't, because, because sometimes when the blind guy wanted to go swimming, he put a leash on Lewis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why? Like, tell me this right, logic. So because there was a blind candidate in the house, they had to cordon off the pool area to make sure it was safe for him. Did they corner off the bath as well, though? No, no. I, I bet mean, the pool was a bit more. I like, bet between yeah, you. I bet between you, you were all rooting for him to fuck off. <laughs> like I bet between you, you were all like, ah, oh, you know, fucking. It was. It was kinda, Joe dropped the ball this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but why <laughs> checking what? the weather app? Why did you get swimming privileges? Yeah, so this is what happened. So towards the end, um, that makes no sense to towards me. Towards the end, they were just like, oh, oh uh, topless. They want me naked. So they went right, Lewis. Everyone's doing the business plan section. We, you know, it's, it's like the filming bit where they uh, they wake up in the morning, they sat in the bedroom reading the business plan, preparing for the day, and that, and they were like, everyone's got really serious things, like ones in the garden, ones in the kitchen. They went, Lewis, you're in the jacuzzi, and I was like, you taking a piss? They were just trying to make me naked at any possible opportunity because I was supposed to be candy for the older women. That uh. was death. Well, I think that they started you off, and they were prepared to give you like a bad storyline. Yeah, so I think on. I think episode one, yeah. they were thinking about making you poster boy for toxic masculinity because because you you shouted, and then episode two and three you were on best behavior and you did well. Well, episode two, I, someone was sexist towards me and I pointed it out. So one of the girls said something like, "Oh, I'm going to put a girl in charge of you boys because you always mess around." Now and I ain't got a fucking minute. I was like, if one of the boys said that about one of the girls, that'd be ridiculous. You can't stand TV. Yeah, I remember that. Actually. Anyway, I made such a fuss about it for so long that it pissed her off to the point where she couldn't stop saying my name throughout the day. This guy called Dean, you know Dean, she kept calling him Lewis. So because I'd done that at the beginning, they had to, um, they had to explain why she kept calling Dean Lewis. He was fleet freaking out because she kept calling him me. They were in the middle of the pitch, she was like, and Lewis is going to, I mean, sorry, Dean, I mean, fucking. And then she would do that over and over again. And so they couldn't include that without including the, the bit at the beginning where we fell out. Anyway, long story short, I was walking through London and some guys randomly storms across the road and goes, you know what, mate? She's a fucking knobhead. How dare she speak to us? Like, if it was the other way around, uh. and it just, Carried an argument I'd seen on TV last night, and I was like, yeah. "What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the?" Fuck? And I forgot that episode was on. But Holy yeah, so shit. I think I was supposed to be. I think they were going to genuinely give me a bad storyline as the tattoo yeah. guy who's aggressive, rather. But see when you see when you're talking about like the legacy of stuff like that, like you're just walking through London and someone's having a go at someone else because of a sentence they've said wrongly. Like it's not like something is going on. Out of do, you know, like, so do you know what? I had Huge. a I had a thing literally two or three weeks ago. Um, it was so weird. So I was doing about to do a gig. I was about to go on stage, and this guy comes up to me. He was a bit drunk, but you know, he comes up to me. He goes, oh, "Hi, all right, mate." He goes, "I follow you on TikTok," and I go, oh, "All right, okay, nice one. Cheers, thanks." Like trying to be nice, and he goes, "You probably think I'm a right cunt," and I went, "No, I said absolutely not. You know, you've had a few drinks and that, and thank you for coming over." He goes, "No, no, you do." Because you said it in one of your Facebook lives. Yeah. Oh, no, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, well, maybe you are, mate. Yeah. Just, like, but you can't remember what you fucking said. But that person will remember forever. Yeah. It's dodgy, man. It's fucking it's dodgy. It's, it's weird, but it's, you know, it's an enjoyable experience in the sense that for a very short period of time, um, everyone knows what you're up to. Everyone knows what you, you know. It was a way for me to say to my family and friends, this is what I do, by the way. Yeah. yeah for yeah. many years, they'd only ever see me getting pissed and doing stupid things. But on the sidelines, I've been grafting every evening. They just didn't know that part of my life. Now, obviously, I'm fully in on business. And you said about, did you get offered any shows yeah, yeah. following it? Well, I mean, for me, it was very much, actually, 
this is my opportunity to get involved in the business. Now, obviously, the, the, the starlight sort of limelight dies down a bit. And you're like, oh, I want to have some more fun. I want to do more fun stuff like that. But actually, staying focused on what I went in there for, which was to start a business, is what I do. But you can see the ones that went in there for to become famous. Yeah. By how, what they do and the bollocks they get up to and stuff like that now. Like if you, um, like, for example, went on as a businessman and wanted to be a businessman, and then you're, like, writing a column for the Daily Star or yeah, something. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be insane. You know. Going on TV and what did he do recently? Oh, he did something recently. It was literally. It Who was, are we talking about, Billy? Uh, Ryan Mark Parsons. Oh, that was it. He went on TV and, and did the. He was it, against people. He said that everyone should be forced to have the vaccine. It was like, yeah, he, he looks like one of the kids oh. from Lazy Town. Okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the one. He was, yeah. he, I feel it's a bit of a lost cause. He was such a nice lad. And I was, yeah, he I came got, across as lovely. I got to know him really well and then he just turned into a little dickhead. Do you know what it was? Katie Hopkins syndrome. Oh, uh, she was on the apprentice, wasn't she? Yeah, I, I, and then she because you this guy off, get fucked in a field as well. You, <laughs> did she get fucked in a field? Yeah, Katie you know, Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, that's how she originally became famous. The like after the apprentice, and then became a right wing tyrant because she got fucked in a field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it. I had well, no idea. See, see with her, well, you right? can't tweet would, her. Would you but... rather? Would you rather just be grafting your business and getting successful and making money and not be a cunt, or just be known as a cunt? Well, the thing I mean, is, I mean, is, it's a pretty easy question to be honest. I, mean, I, know, <laughs> I don't know her net worth, what she does, or anything. Yeah. I just know she's a prick. Would you rather be a successful businessman <laughs> or be a cunt? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll balance it. And do you I'll know what right though? Is there is always the risk with anything like this that you do something that that is what you are known for for the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah. So when I was, um, I used to watch loads of Big Brother. Used to love it. Used to really like it. Now I used to like Big Brother when they had normal fucking people in Big Brother. You know when they had ten Cameron Stout. No, remember just random guys. Science. From yeah. yeah. Who normal. Sham- Who's champagne bottle up her flute? This is the one, Kinga. Yeah. Right. So Kinga. <laughs> Um, was also, uh, it's beautiful how so, uh, so in the same wavelength you two are. Yeah, really. I know, like, I know. I've never said flute in my life. Yeah. So, I, so I didn't even know there was my language. one girl called Kinga. She went on. She was um, uh, how. T- she was quite a party girl. That's what okay. she was trying to do. Um, and it was kind of in the age of Geordie Shore as well. She she got really smashed and she led on the fucking grass outside and shoved a wine bottle up her vag on TV. <laughs> And that is how she will be known yeah. forever. Can you imagine, like, like being a dad? Do you know, can you imagine, like, a dad's mates being like, oh, what's your daughter up to yeah. these days? <laughs> <laughs> About the label. No, that, the, the man we did that morning, though, he's like, oh, she's on telly tonight. And then the next day, he's like, oh, why, <laughs> did, you know I, what? why the, did I say that in squash? They'll why? have had the talk as well. They'll have had the talk where he sat down. He's gone, don't do anything yeah. that you'd regret. Yeah. First yeah. night... Fuck, gets a bottle of Merlot and just tries to make it a different vintage. It's a beautiful, a be- <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful image of her dad watching that and then just going to the cupboard and hiding all the Ribena. Just like, oh. <laughs> it was just I like the thing. idea that he's watching it on TV, horrified, and his WhatsApp pings, and then it pings again, and then oh, again, no, and again, and again, watched, and again. Back then, it'll be BBM. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> more it's people adding him. Oh, no. Do you know, here's a here's the thing. I... So, so I auditioned for Big Brother once, didn't get in, right? I, also, I was about 18 and I wanted to do these things and now I would never do it in a million years, right? I also auditioned for, do you remember Shipwrecked? No, yeah, no, you'd be good. dreadful on that. Yeah. Absolutely Yo, you're dreadful. dreadful. Absolutely just dreadful. how sunburnt he would be. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I was, uh, Freddie died on day three. Um, <laughs> malnutrition after day two. <laughs> it was weird. So here's the thing, right? You go in on Shitwreck, right? And they had all, and this was when Shitwreck was dead popular, right? So they had an op, open cast and open audition, right? And we came in and there is, um, there's six of you and there's one person that was like a casting agent. And they go, why do you want to be on Shipwrecked? And you go around and you say one by one, right? And on mine, there was me. There were two of the most good-looking men I've ever seen in my life. Similar to now. And and three of the most good-looking women that I've ever seen in my entire life. And so I'm looking at them like, already disadvantaged. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? However, and, you do have a huge Lord of the Flies vibe about you. So it could be... <laughs> It could be you could be the piggy and just go in and do that. That'd be amazing. If Why we, do you want to be on shit right now? Take out a conch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have so much respect for you if you did that. So, so right, uh, you sat and you listened to everybody's right. So the first person was like, um, I don't actually, I don't really know. I just think it'd be really fun. You know what I mean? And they were like, okay, cool. 
And then they went to the next guy and they went, why do you want to be on shit, Rich? He was like, yeah, I just think like, you know, the vibe and everything, yeah? You know, he just took bollocks, basically. Uh, went round, I can't remember what I said, it was total bo- dog shit. They went round to the last girl and they went, why do you want to be on shit, Rich? And she went, because last month I heard that my boyfriend had cheated on me and I want to get back by fucking every lad. And they literally went, thank you to you five, you my love, through to the next round. Like, literally, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, that's I, what they're looking for. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't believe I don't believe for a minute it was true, but she knew exactly what yeah, she was fucking the doing. System. So I got offered to go on a reality TV show once, right? Recently. I was about, no, I was about 19. Right? Well, oh, shit, yeah. recently. Yeah. yeah, the circle, but yeah. I didn't get official mm-hmm. offer through. Right? I mean, it was... It was close. It was, was close. Going, was going the circle was, is one of the ones I would go on. Oh, I'd go on the circle as well because no one comes off looking like a cunt oh. because the whole thing is manipulating people, yeah. the whole game. And so if you're good at play, it's, it, it always makes me laugh when people are on uh, like reality TV show and they go, oh, you're a right game player. It's like, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, mean, a, it's a massive game yeah. and the winner gets 100 grand. Yeah. Yeah, we're all. I, I pay five pounds to play five asides, and that's a game. <laughs> if there's two hundred fifty grand at point, I'd play that game too. Like, <laughs> what is can that? Can you imagine if you win it one nil, you go in the corner flag, and no. one of the other opposition goes, "You fucking game there's player." A, uh, there's a boy in our football team who does that. We pay five asides, and if his team are winning with a minute to go, he takes the ball into the corner, and we're all like. We paid five pounds for this. Like, why? Why are you <laughs> shit housing this? What is the point? Uh, would you? What was it? Right, Passing was, it back to the keeper like it was Denmark <laughs> in the nineties. <laughs> Schmeichling it. Uh, what reality show? Did you so know? right. So we guess. Said, can you give us content? So you'll never guess. You'll never guess in a million yeah. years because it was a new thing. Okay. Right. But the the production company, what they do is they go, "Hey, we're really reputable. Check out some of our really reputable shows." But they don't tell you that they also make like you know dog sure. shit telly as well. Exactly. Right. You? They're like, "Hey, we've made the BAFTA nominated fucking you know." Michael Palin does canaling. Do you know I've what got, I mean? And shit you, like right, that. Have a guess about what show. I've got a guess I'm in looking, my head. I'm looking and thinking to myself, right? But I, I've already, I, I've been wrong in the past, but it was Gladiators, it turned out to be. Because my PE teacher was on Gladiators with his wife, who was no PE teacher. And we found that out. They didn't fucking lived it down. Really? I was, like, I was like, I'm hoping. That's that amazing. Like, oh, mate, whenever, whenever you're doing cross country, all the kids will be like, contender, yeah. this is ready. Well, also, we were Scottish, so we had the accent, so it was even better. <laughs> so I'm thinking, was it gladiators? But I can't, I just can't see you going for that. Take mate, that this, mate, I wouldn't be able to do the travel later if I had a fresh run at it. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking embarrassing bodies. <laughs> that's, what I was well, that's not that old, though. So, yeah, true. So, I love that that's the only thing like, you think like, of. But so, so, so embarrassing so, bodies, he was like, yeah, that's not that old. So he would the go on it. Or is it? Right, it was, I would say, arguably worse. Oh. So, right, <laughs> they, so they did think, and bear in mind, it was 18, 19 <laughs> at the time, right? And it was basically, the show was uh, trialing, uh, so you basically be in a spa, in, in this luxury spa for like two weeks or whatever. <coughs> Genuinely <laughs> thought you meant the shop spa. <laughs> Genuinely thought you meant spa. And I was like, That's COVID, like, isn't it? I, th- um, I thought you said spa. Garage. Like yeah. the shot, and I was like, like castaway. <laughs> <laughs> but you can only eat flying saucers. So like a, a spa, a health right, spa, a spa, right? Okay. Spa, yeah, right. Thanks. Um, for t- you, you were in there for two weeks, and the show was going to be called the greatest diets in history, right? And you would be trialing loads Whoa. of different diets. <coughs> oh God, why am I coughing? So, um. <laughs> There would be like an Edwardian diet where you had to chew things 26 times or something like that. You get emotional the- talking about it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to have a drink of water because I'm absolutely fucked. Oh, that um, sounds... Like, the, word, the word diet is setting my hands Yeah, <laughs> but there are... <laughs> my throat's automatically closed. Yeah. I'm, I'm going into anaphylactic shock because <laughs> you've mentioned cutting my carbs. <laughs> and now, right, so the show was called... The greatest diets in history, and they were trying like a uh, Elizabethan diet, an Edwardian diet, and it was meant to be educational and sort of like, oh, isn't this? But it was gonna have a fun aspect to it as well. And the way that they sold it to me is they said, uh, like they knew that I was just thinking about getting into comedy and stuff like that, and I wanted to be on stage and stuff. And they said, listen, this would be great for you because. Uh, we're thinking of doing a spin-off show, oh. like, uh, you know, The Greatest Diets Extra, and you could present that, and then that would be your way into presenting. And so I was they've like, given you a hook. This is it. And I thought, fuck, what a great opportunity. How lucky am I? Now, we talked back and forth and stuff, 
um, and they sent us a contract through, right? Now, the contract that they sent through, and I imagine you'll have had a contract through as well. So they sent, they were going to pay me a pound. And the reason that they pay me a pound is because it, they have to pay a nominal amount to make it legally binding, right? Yeah. But the contract is humongous and full of legal bollocks. Yeah. But when you sit and read it, it is basically, we fucking own you. Yeah. That's what they basically say. You can't ever complain. You can't ever sue us. We decide how we want to represent you. We can change anything and everything about this show at a moment's notice, and you are contractually obliged to go along with it. And I was like, yeah, but I might get that extra thing. Like, I was so hung up on that, right? In the end, 11th hour, and we're talking 11 p.m. the night before it was due to film, I still hadn't signed the contract, I decided no, right? No, it was the Thursday before, and they were doing it on the Monday, so there was a few days, and I said, I, I sent them one back saying I've decided no, right? Immediately, I got a phone call from somebody saying, you said yes, that's a verbal contract. And I went, when did I ever say yes to you? And they went, we've got a recording that Whoa. you said yes. And I said, no, I didn't. I never said that. And they went, you have to go ahead with it. You told us yes. And I went, show us where you told me yes. And the phone went dead because they were like, fuck. Oh. Done, right? So I, I, I was like, that is close, right? Waited for a few months. Lo and behold, in six months' time or whatever, brand new TV show came out and it was like Britain's fattest knobheads. Like, and it was, <laughs> it was literally like, can these stupid fat fucks lose any of their big tit weights if we put them on some of the greatest diets in history? The smelly fat bastards. <laughs> here's fat cunt number one. And it's like, oh, hello, I'm a big fat fuck. And then he goes, and here's fat bastard number two. Hiya, I'm divorced and I'm fat. And here's, and honestly, so they made him do all these diets, but they flat out humiliated them. There was what, what channel? You, Are we talking five? Uh, it might have been Channel 5, it's actually. Be, or it, it might have been Channel 4. Um, uh, they also, for no reason at all, had a matron who just screamed at them for being fat fucks. So every once in a while, this matron <laughs> would come out dressed like it was fucking... Watch me call it. One flew over the cuckoo's nest, yeah. nurse ratchet outfit, and she'd be like, hey, you fat fox! Have you ever thought that was your role? <laughs> <laughs> like, that could be a great plot twist, wouldn't it? Like, Eat some vegetables, <laughs> you <yeah>. fat fox! <laughs> that was literally... They also... So here's the thing, right? Is there was no science behind it whatsoever. They flat out yeah. humiliated... There was one point where they made him uh, play table tennis naked, Right? And they had to play table tennis naked and they justified it and they went, huh, you know, the Elizabethans sometimes played sports naked. And then that was that that was it, right? But the whole thing was <laughs> basically watch very fat people jiggle their tits about yeah. whilst knocking a thing over. The ironic thing is you'd have had someone at home with like a bucket of KFC going, I'll fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> watching it. Do you know what and there was, there was no Fat bastard extra to present or anything like that. What there was nothing about that. But honestly, I was. Do you know what? I was dead naive, uh, and they definitely sold it to me with this. It'll improve your career. Yeah, yeah, It'll yeah. help this. But the fact of the matter is, is that I genuinely believe that you can get people to act against their best interests mm -hmm. if you promise them the right things. Yeah, and I think that's kind of. I mean, that's essentially dating, isn't it, as well? <laughs> like, everything, <laughs> everything about not, it. Not for me, but... Yeah, but that's the thing, like, when you see shows like that, because reality show, uh, reality TV encompasses so many different things, when you hear about stuff like that, whereas some of the stuff that I enjoy... Do you ever watch Married at First Sight Australia? Yes, season six. There's one in the... So there's one coming to the UK. I don't know Are you doing it? No, 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 but I got asked to be part of um, this, and I, I also I went and had a look at what the show was all about. I was like, fuck No. Like were, you not, were you not tempted? Well, they're doing the, they're going to revamp the UK one into the, okay. the, like the Australian one because it's been very successful. Yeah. And I watched it and I was just like, not a chance in hell. Like I couldn't deal with that. Oh, shit. mate, the Australia just one gives was me a headache. So the Australia good. one was funny as fuck. There was a bit in it, right? Season six. There's a guy who's on it, and the reason that he's on it is because he had um, he had cancer. He had like testicle cancer. Oh, or something. yeah, like and he's with Cyril. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so oh, mate. I've got a story so about he, here, so. he, he he got paired up with this uh, half Filipino woman called Cyril, right? And in their family and culture, they're very very close. 
uh, and Cyril's brother. Yeah, I seen this. He goes mental. Was, yeah, he was outside interviewing. Why have I seen this? It's so good. Um, so good. Man. Outside interviewing, and they were like, he was like, you know, what do you want with my uh, sister and all this? And he was like, you know, trying to. He was trying to be really nice. He was genuinely a nice guy. And then he was like, well, why haven't you found anyone before? Oh, but, uh, but why, why did you need to come on this? And the guy was like, well, you know, I had some health problems. I wasn't, you know, I was a bit sick. So, you know, said, oh, you had the flu, did you? Oh, oh, you had a little cough, did you? Oh, uh, 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 that's no excuse. That's ridiculous. Blah, 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 blah. And the dude just goes, I had cancer. And he goes, oh. Yeah. Like, like, legit, I've and never all, seen a guy just go, oh, they shit. Can all, they always try to pick up, like, dodgy family members and focus on them. But see... 2018, I, I, I was doing a show in sign language. My mum and dad are deaf, so I was doing a show in sign language. I won a few awards. Thanks for asking. And um, <laughs> uh, explains what you meant before. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The fuck is he talking one about? of the nights, I won an award in Australia, and then I did an interview with the big paper the next day, and they were like, "How are you going to celebrate?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm going to go out with my mates. We're going to go to a winery. We're going to get pissed." Genuinely, what I did was got myself a different hotel. And he uh, got two Uber Eats McDonald's and watched seven episodes of Married at First Night Australia. <laughs> and that's how I celebrated. And honestly, it was incredible. Oh, it was brilliant. so good. Uh, but yeah, that was it. Uh, I, I love shows like that, where I, and The Circle and stuff like that. Whereas The Apprentice, I think the big problem with The Apprentice is, is, is it still Wednesdays? Tuesdays. Is it yeah. Tuesday? Whatever night it is, it's always Champions League night. Yeah. So, <laughs> who, who am I going to watch, sadly? <laughs> do, you but, know, do, you know, do you know what the problem with The Apprentice is? The fact that. We're in 2021, and you can watch Married at First Sight, binge watch it. The uh, the Circle, you can binge watch it. Yeah. The Apprentice still doesn't even fucking have it on. It's not even on the iPlayer. They don't have it online, and it's not on Netflix. They don't. It's like what yeah. sort of distribution model is it where they go? And even so, social media, they don't even use social media. In fact, they don't even like the cash using social media. It's like, what's your distribution model? Like, hope people remember it. Yeah. And just tune in on every. It's like The Simpsons. I used to go home and watch Simpsons every day at 6 p.m. after school. Kids don't do that these days. They no, everything's been dodge. Yeah, yeah. I used sense. to watch. I used to watch Simpsons as well, and I used to. I actually started watching Hollyoaks because Simpsons was uh, Hollyoaks yeah. was on before yeah. Simpsons, and so you'd have to sit through. But because you had to sit through it, you just ended up fucking watching it. Like, but nowadays, yeah, it's well, everything's. It's, just, the it's the evolution, isn't it? They're just not evolving with the time, so it won't be around. I can't see it being around for very long, just because. Do you think last I, year is? No, the I pandemic is maybe enough. Are they doing another I think one? Wants, they're doing two, two lots more. I think he wants to do two, two more, but I think it's just. For me, it's like, I don't find it as... If I could access it, great, but it's, I can't. So I have to be there watching it every week on, on time. Or catch on BBC iPlayer, which then goes offline anyway. So Can I ask two apprentice questions before, like before, I don't know how, when we're going to finish, but two questions I've generally always wondered. Okay. Do you go in with um, pre-planned shit team names? Uh, no, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, they used to focus heavily on that. Yeah. I can't remember what I was They stop now, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they literally yeah. go, what's your team name? And Lord Sugar goes, oh, sounds like a bloody, sounds like a bloody bakery. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. It. And then they'd never say it ever again. Right, okay. We said it, but I don't think we ever mentioned it again like, after that one episode where we chose team names. Second question, what does Lord Sugar smell like? Um, <laughs> is, it, is it a nice <laughs> smell or is it eels? I, I, like... I didn't think of the answer to the question. I was just thinking old people smell a piss. <laughs> but I know that he doesn't, no, no, but he doesn't smell a piss. I'm not yeah. saying that. I'm just saying that was the first thing I thought of when you yeah. said that. Is he, is he a nice why. aroma? Or? What just want to clarify, I don't think old people smell a piss. All that money and you still smell a <laughs> piss. How do you think he's got all that money? <laughs> do you know what? Seen the price of Shower Jill? You don't get close enough to him actually to sniff him. And I, do you not? No, ever? No. He's always stood away from you. And sat over a big ass table, like it's really long that table. It's huge, in fact. And like, do you have like an after, like a rap party? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't go to it. Do you not? No, Claude and Karen did. Karen fucking hates me. Does she? She, she hates me. But you know what? You know what? She hates me, but she hates me for the reason why most people would. It's because I've got tattoos. I'm tall and, and I got a tan and, and I, I'm Larry. And she's worked in a male dominated football environment for a long time. She immediately looked at me and just went, "He's a like, he's a prick." Immediately, she just judged me on that versus actually getting to know us. Yeah, because your tattoos were a big thing. Yeah. Which is mad. No, you think ridiculous. about society. <laughs> yeah, like, isn't it ridiculous? Like, no, it's only mad because they were saying it was they were bad, but the majority of the normal people in the world were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a ridiculous thing. I right? think that that is that's part of when they were teeing you up. Yeah. So I think that that's part of when they were teeing you up to be like, like tattooed Larry. Yeah, well, you that's know, because I went. I was quite heavy into the gym at the point. Cause obviously, the Apprentice came out, and I was I was off. But I was going for like two years before, five days a week. So I was actually quite stocky as well when I went on there. Um, and they were just, I think they were just putting me on there as this muscly guy with tattoos and he was going to be like a failed ladies man or whatever. They were trying to give me that story and you were right, they were. And then they realised actually, oh, he's genuinely interested in business. Oh, he's you've got two degrees, you can't. Have can't you ever understand. seen, uh, speaking of like stories and stuff like that, have you ever seen, there's a thing on the X Factor, right? It's amazing. 
it's this girl that comes on on the X Factor. And um, she, she's got short blonde hair, sort of stuck up in a Mohican like this. She's wearing a denim jacket, a pink crop top, and she's wearing leather pants with boots, right? And she looks a bit like the singer Pink, right? She sounds a bit like the singer Pink as oh, well. I see that. I, yeah, and she sings, na 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 let's all have a fight, na, na, yeah. or whatever the fucking song's called. Um, and so she sings that as her song. And they all go, all the judges go, why are you trying to be like Pink? And she goes, they told me to sing that uh, song. And she goes, nice. the producers told me. They told me to go out and sing this song. I didn't want to sing Pink. They told me to look like this and act like this and be like this. And then Talisa, the fucking rat, goes, uh, honey, nobody told you. You had your own choice at the end of the day. It's like, yeah, but if, the, if all the producers are saying you should definitely do this, of course... She's going to fucking yeah. do that. Do you know what, what I mean? That exact thing's happened to but me. You see, you see in her eyes, there's a moment where she realises, fuck, I've been set up here. Yeah. And what she does is she doesn't throw the mic, she just drops it in almost like a state of fear. She drops it and she walks off the stage. Now, and she's pissed off. She knows exactly what's happened. Her eyes, literally, it, it's terrifying to watch. At that moment, she goes, fuck, I see what they've done here. And it's it's almost like the mic turns red hot. She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like this. She comes off stage and you can tell it is a woman who's realised exactly what's happened. She realises that she's been framed. She realises that she's been set up and her only reaction is to leave. But what they do is they put background music on to make it look like she storms off. So the music... Is, is it pink as well? Well, the mu no, the music goes... Da, 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 you know, like really moody stuff. And it just makes her look like she had a paddy. Yeah, and she's left. a bad guy. That's all it fucking takes. You said that happened to you. Yeah, well, not, not so lots of guys. In fact, the producer been like, we wouldn't do that. Why would we do that to you? And it was sat there. I was like, look, I remember this happening. Right? I'm not going to tell you too much about the details, but basically something had happened where your teams are separate. But actually, in this one particular scenario, our team was just down the fucking corridor. So usually you have to make a phone call and they're like, oh, the team can't take your call just yet. You're like, oh, we need to speak to them though because come to a deadline, if we don't find this out by tomorrow and they're like, oh, you've missed your deadline, guys. You have to wait till tomorrow. So they they have the power to make things go wrong if they want Yeah, to. yeah, yeah, Anyway, totally. in this particular situation, I knew they were down the hallway and I could see the camera crews. I was like, walking out. You can't go down there. I was like, you're going to get out of my fucking way. I need to go and speak to them. You can't speak to me like that. I was like, well, you are going to get out of my fucking I'm really pissed off at this point because it's all going to part. Right, right. Claude pulls me to the side and he's like, can you speak to the producers like that again? You can keep out this show. And I was like, I don't really care, mate. I'm really angry because in this particular situation, I know that that's, we can just have this conversation. You can't, it's because they made up some sort of bollocks excuse. Anyway, the next day, it all went to pot. Everything went wrong as it was supposed to. And I was like, they made that happen. I was yeah, like, I wonder yeah, how much. Yeah. So we were all sat and we all came together and went, right, okay. So we sat with the producers and went, we're not happy as a group. And they were like, why? And was like, because this happens. We've started realizing that you're doing this. I don't want to give too much away because it sort of ruins it for the viewers. But basically, I was just like, well, the, as a group, we were just like, we're not idiots. And it's sort of like gaslighting them because then they're going, well, we're not going to do that. Why would we do that to you? We, we, we have no control of it. It's like, yeah. You're speaking to, you speak, I'm like, you're speaking to, at this point, it was like nine, you're speaking to nine business owners, people who are very clever, have all come from different fields in life, and not fucking idiots. And you speak to us like my morons. And it's like, do you think we all came together and just made this up? They start to make you think that you're being paranoid. Yeah. So in that case, like so Lisa's gone, well, we would never do that to you. It's gaslighting. And it yeah, is. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's fucking with someone. But again, if you if you do that with someone who's again not quite as strong mentally or might already have issues with that sort of stuff, or yeah, had yeah. gaslight in the past, that could really trigger some shit. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, that was a bit that's like, it's the darker side of filming. And it's when the storylines are in at play and you you know, they've got a bigger picture, they're trying to build a show. And I get that, but at the same time, I don't think you can really fuck with people like but that yeah. because the that is when your duty care is going out the window. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, is you mentioned loads about being strong mentally. I think being strong mentally is like when people say, I have a good sense of humour. Everyone likes to think that they are strong mentally. Everyone likes to think, I've got this mental resilience and fortitude. It's only when you are getting thousands of fucking messages every single day yep. from people going, you're a cunt and yeah, you're exactly. rubbish and you're awful. That's <laughs> when you realise, oh, fuck, actually, this stuff affects me loads. Yeah. And, if it, and if it does affect you, there ain't nothing you can do about it. You yeah. just got to sit there and wait it out. Oh, and also, it. for guys like yourself, like how many times do you see people who are used to telly and they get screwed over slightly and they go into a downward spiral, let alone people who've never done telly before and they are in situations where it's designed to make it as awkward as possible 
and to make you think you're thinking something and not. Yeah. It's just... Do you know what's dead funny as well is when you... The amount of times that you get a shitty comment online or something like that and you, you get something and you think, what a dickhead thing to say. And you click on the person's, I go, I go look at him, you yeah. click on the person's picture, and and, and the idiot. yeah yeah they're always like oh <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> like fuck out. Window. Well, I always think as well. This is how I do with online hate, right? Is I click on the picture of the person and I look at them and I go, would I trust your opinion about fucking anything? Yeah. Like if you said to me, I ate at a really good restaurant last night. You should definitely go. Would I go? Yeah, de I'll definitely. Would I fuck? Because they all look like utter yeah. fucking idiots. I love it. I used a screen, screenshot. I screenshot them. I'll write a comment going, "Cheers, mate. You just made it to my Instagram," and then they'll click over to Instagram and they'll see that. Susan said she wouldn't fuck me. Susan's sixty-five years old, missing her two front teeth. I, actually, I'm quite offended that you wouldn't shag me. I mean, I take that too hard because if you wouldn't shag me, I've not got a fucking chance. Um, stuff like that. <laughs> so I just I, like them. If someone gives a negative comment, I just leave a like so they know I've seen it. But I'm not rising to it. And then people do more and then you just like it. And do you know just... what? I love how for you, a hateful comment is I, someone I saying, shag. I won't fuck you. It's like, that's yeah. my reality. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even pick up on it. I was like 65 years old. I was like, if you would, no, but that's one example. There's one thing, I, one thing that the show did make me realize and that I'd never had experience with in my life and people don't really get until they do something like you're on a stage or you, you put yourself in an audience in a public forum is that the majority of people are fucking morons. Like, most people that are online and stuff like that, these people that you see trolling, are just absolute dregs, like are not doing anything. They're just kicking about doldos and whatever, sat at home and they're just being negative as fuck online because they're lashing out of the world. But the majority, like majority of people that do that stuff, not, I, just, I realize I said the majority of people online are more. No, the majority of people trolling. Oh, they online. are though, they are. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, to this, be honest, if you're listening to this, in this, this far end, you're fucked. In like. this particular <laughs> though, I'm saying like the people's trolling, they are. Just absolute dregs. Like they are the worst types of people. They're people that are doing nothing. Like they are the worst of the worst. But the thing is, when you read a comment, you don't think of it like that. You think of the, the part of your world. You go, oh, that's like my, that's like me going down the road and someone saying that to me. But you don't realize that these are the people that are not even in your circle, not in your world. You, your world's apart from each other. You'll never see them. You ever meet them. They are literally just bottom feeders, and all they do is get thrills off trying to bring other people down. Yeah. And here's the thing: is how can a reality TV show protect against those people? You can't, and that's you, you can't, can you? You can't because because those people are always going to fucking exist. Yeah. And yeah, just when you're talking there about uh, when you're talking about like kind of people, and there's also people pretending not to be the, uh, who they are. Yeah. Like great shows, Catfish, love Catfish, yeah. love Catfish, love the aspect of that. And do you ever think when you're getting those kind of hateful comments and stuff like that, that the picture is of the person there is probably not who they are as well? You can work out, can't you? If it's, I can work out pretty quick. It's, like I've been around marketing for quite a long time. You can work out if it's a fake profile pretty fast by like the pictures, how often they post and that sort of stuff. If well, they're yeah. in any way attractive. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if they're anything over a three, you go, that's not them. But, but, but again, you, 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 be get, you can be getting trolled. There's something called Tattle. There's this website called Tattle recently that pops up. And it's literally a website dedicated to people gossiping about other people. It is the, I mean, I've heard about it. And I've been on the website to see if this bullshit was actually real. I cannot believe the concept of a website where you start a forum. So I'd start a thread going, Freddie, look at the state of Freddie. I've just been seeing him in Liverpool. And someone else comes on and goes, yeah, I don't like his beard. I'm just going to start slagging you off now. <laughs> yeah. And then they would all just carry on slagging Mate, off this Freddie. is like my WhatsApp conversation. It's fine, do But they would, they would follow that story and the, the thread would continue all about Freddie and how much they dislike him. And it becomes this really toxic forum where all these absolute gimps go to... Sounds like, like Twitter, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> it's, it's, but, it's, but it's hidden. Everyone's hidden behind a... Oh, it's, it's really? It's like a profile. Oh. It's like completely anonymous. And do you know what, as well? I bet all of those people in February all go, hashtag be kind. Yeah. Hashtag, oh my God. But the fact that I even existed, to me, it blew my mind. Because it's quite... As far as I'm aware, it's quite new. The fact that I even existed is just is really sad. It's unbelievably sad, but as... The one thing is for sure is like, as long as I'm not a part of that shit, I'm never going to be part of that world, I'll know I'll go much further than most people in life. Mm. It's not hard to beat 99% of people and get to that top 1% if the majority of people are people like that. And they, do, I can see why you get dragged into that, why you feel maybe <laughs> you start losing at life or you start competing against other people and you start seeing your friends winning and you start getting jealous and then a sort of green envy takes over and you, instead of you fixing your own situation, you start lashing out on people. And, but when you start doing that, the moment you start doing that, I, think, I feel that you're just dragged into that sort of, mm. you're not going anywhere sort of mentality. Well, Lewis, mate, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. We are going to have a break now and we're going to record Pigoted Extra, which is an 
extra episode just for our Patreons. Uh, and we are going to be talking, first of all, about what is the worst um, bit of tro- or the funniest bit of trolling, I should say, that you've ever had. So that's oh, what we're wow. going to be kicking off at with that. If you want to listen to Picketed Extra, you can do. All you need to do is become a patron. Uh, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Picketed. And uh, Patreon prices start from £3 a month. Before that, you get loads of extra stuff. You get early access. You get access to Pigoted Extra, which is more content, discounts on merchandise, access to Discord servers, loads and loads and loads of stuff. So if you have enjoyed this, please subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to. Hopefully we'll see you again next week and think about becoming a Patreon for more exclusive content. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. This episode of Pigoted is sponsored by Taylor's Toys. Taylor's Toys are a sex toy company. They specialize in doing high-quality sex toys that won't fall apart after one or two uses. Head over to taylorstoys.co.uk, check out the amazing range that they've got on offer, and if you use the discount code PIGOTED at checkout, you get yourself 10% off on all products. Taylor's Toys, spice things up in the bedroom. Thank me later.